Hi everybody, welcome to the Department of Electronic and Electrical Engineering lecture on how research on optical networks is helping the planet, hosted by Dr. Alejandra Begeli. I'm now going to hand over for the lecture to commence. Thank you for joining. Thank you very much, NAFTA. Thank you everyone for attending this talk. In um, 20 minutes, I hope to talk to you a little bit about sustainability, a bit about optical networks, um, and a bit about how optical networks relate to sustainability. And uh, for this talk, I have chosen this uh, picture you have seen this, the plant on the background represents um, the life on planet. And the wiggle line on top of it, for those of you who might not know, is the symbol we use for photons. And we talk about sustainable photons because optical networks operate with light. And um, we, we have been told that we have people from outside UCL joining us today. So this talk is, um, um, has been thought to be given to a wide audience. So don't feel um, scared if you don't know anything about networks. We will guide you through this, this talk. Okay, let's, let's start. And first, I'd like to start with, um, oh, sorry, something happened here. Okay, with two definitions of sustainability and how they relate to our work. The first one is the ability of an activity to be maintained at, at a certain level or, or rate without causing harm. And the second one, which probably is the most um, known one, is avoidance of the depletion of natural resources in order to maintain ecological balance. And in the first um, definition, there are examples like our current population growth. If we keep on growing at this level and with this level of consumption, probably this is not going to be sustainable. Or using things, uh, plastic things that are used only once. These are examples of, of the first definition. Examples of the second definitions are water. Water has been overexploited. Uh, my home country is a mining country and mining activity really overexploits water and, and pollutes water. So that's something we need to take care of or uh, the exploitation of trees. So these are examples of two aspects of sustainability. And today I'm going to talk how um, by by working on optical networks, and I'll let you know what is this, we can help a little bit uh, with these two problems. Um, so, I'm sorry about that. So here at UCL, we have a commitment to sustainability, and that's why this talk is inside this framework. And the two first points you can see here are related to how we as people at UCL get better at getting to know sustainability aspects and researching on it. The next three ones had to do with uh, stopping unsustainable actions. Uh, and the last one, it's a beautiful one in helping to avoid depletion of natural resources. Uh, so in this context, inside UCL and sustainability at UCL, uh, is that I'm, I'm giving this talk. So let's talk a, a bit about optical networks. So an uh, optical network is any computer network where information is sent through an optical fiber. And an optical fiber, it's um, something that on the ends might look like this. I have a, a piece of optical fiber here. You can see it's super light. Um, you can see the two types of connectors um, that you can see in the screen. You can see them here. I'm going to put it closer to the camera. And, and this is uh, a lid. So you take out of it and the optical fiber is there. You cannot see it because the diameter of the optical fiber, not, not through the camera at least, is similar to the diameter of the human hair. So it's really, really small and um, light and flexible. And so this is the type of uh, optical fi uh, fiber we use in, in labs, not in the real world. And inside this um, really small, part you can see here inside this circle. What usually uh, you find is this configuration. We have a core, which is where light propagates through. And you can see the light here being represented by these arrows. So lights propagate inside the core. We have a cladding, which is another material uh, with a refractive index such that the light doesn't get out. And then we have a buffer coating 
to protect the fiber uh, into commercial installations. There are extra protection to avoid um, mechanical damage. There are much more hostile environments there. I'll show you in a bit uh, a couple of pictures. Um, so this is how data is transmitted in fiber. Data is transformed into light and light is transmitted to fiber as opposed to electrical signals, signals sorry, in copper. And um, the, the, the big breakthrough we had is that um, 20 years ago, more or less, systems started to be implemented, implementing wavelength division multiplexing. In simple words, that means instead of putting one optical signal through the fiber, we can put several of them all together simultaneously in the fiber, actually multiplying the capacity of the fiber. And these different signals um, are in different wavelengths. So that's why we represent them with different colors. Uh, even when the um, light we use for optical communications is not in the visible spectrum, we can still think of different wavelengths are different colors. And, and, and that's fantastic because you can send multiple simultaneous signals in the same uh, fiber. And you have seen already, no, you haven't because it's really small, but I have tried to show you how small the, the optical fiber is. So internet today is built on top of this WDM. Uh, WDM stands for these different colors coming into the fiber. It's built on WDM optical networks. And um, here I'm showing you how big this is. is. Uh, I'm showing you here the submarine cable map of this year, 2021. There's a company called Telegeography that releases this map every single year. It's updated every single year. And um, you can see here how huge is the uh, deployment of fiber around the world, uh, all over the world. At the beginning, 15 years ago, for example, the optical fiber through Africa was inexistent. Now you can see all the ring going over the African continent, the same, the same for South America. So it's, it's huge. It's millions of kilometers of, of fiber. And, uh, the way we do it, just in case you are asking, uh, the way we installed fiber in the, in the sea, under the sea, is using fiber that, of course, doesn't look like that uh, because the sea is a really hostile environment. So it's really a, a thick uh, piece of um, protection that you use on the fiber, as the one you are looking at this. And we use a ship um, to lay the, the cable on, on the uh, sea level, on the sea uh, ground. And, um, and what, one thing that is happening today is that previously, 20, 15 years ago, the people who were lying fiber on the sea were the big telecom operators like Alcatel, for example. Today, because we have a lot of data centers now being managed by content providers like Amazon, Facebook, Google, Microsoft, they are also installing a lot of optical fiber. Uh, terrestrial and submarine. And, uh, and you can see here some of the networks they haven't started to install. This is from the same company, Telegeography, but this is from last year. This is the state of the submarine networks from the content providers in 2020. So we have this huge amount of optical fiber in the planet. And, and the question is, why are we putting so much fiber? Uh, why are not putting copper? And how does it compare? Well, the main reason why we use fiber and not copper is because of, well, there are several reasons, but the main is bandwidth. Uh, really the velocity, the speed you can get with optical fiber is unbeatable uh, with copper. Um, but, but sometimes you get a huge benefit like bandwidth and the speed at expenses of the planet. So the question is, are we putting all this optical fiber around the world when copper will be more friendly in terms of environmental impact. And this is, I want to show you in this slide. Um, some people say, if you look at the blocks in internet, they say, oh, optical fiber is much friendly, much more friendly, friendlier, because uh, optical fiber is made of glass. Uh, usually there are also plastic ones, but most of them are made of glass. And glass comes from the sand and, and, and you can find sand all over the place as opposed to copper that needs to be mined uh, to get it. Uh, so of course, optical fiber is much more 
friendly to the, to the environment. But, but you know, it's not just getting a, a handful of sand and getting it transformed in fiber. The process of product producing fiber uses a lot of chemicals and it's done at very high temperatures, 1,500 Celsius degree Celsius. Um, so you, need, you really need to do a study to see whether this is true or not. Um, so let me show you the um, results of one of those studies. Uh, they are very difficult to find because now nobody is really implementing uh, of copper uh, networks this day. But there's a nice study published in 28 where they evaluated how much carbon emission you get from producing one kilometer of optical fiber versus one kilometer of, of copper. And you can see the difference is not huge, 20, one, 120 versus 150, 40, sorry. But if you think of the amount of kilometers we have deployed around the world in fiber, we have two years ago, we have 511 million kilometers. So then the difference is huge. And it's um, this deployment of fiber is always growing. Uh, at that time, 10% annually. So even, even small differences are big. But the, the good news on this is that there, there have been further efforts on decreasing the, the emission of producing fiber by changing the way fiber is produced. And um, there have been reported really good news in terms of, you can see a huge decrease from 120 to eight or even point zero five, which is amazingly good. Um, so there are efforts on this line and how to decrease uh, the carbon emissions due to production of fiber. So that's a first good news. The second good news had to do with operation, the operation phase. Uh, when you look at, at the sustainability of a product, you have to see the whole life cycle of that product. Um, so it's production, operation, end of life. In terms of operation, when you have optical fiber, I'm going to refer, there are several aspects here, but I'm going to refer only to two, energy consumption and the benefit of having fiber in terms of telecommuting. In terms of energy consumption, a first um, big benefit is that compared with copper, you need much less equipment to amplify the signal. As the signal travels through the optical fiber or through copper, um, it gets degraded because there are losses, because of different physical effects. And, uh, and if it gets increased to a, to a limit that you cannot detect it, then you cannot transmit anything. So to compensate for that problem, you use amplifiers that work exactly in the same way as work with your amplifiers when you, use, um, when you want to listen to music. They amplify the, the, the intensity of the music. Um, so here is the same. The, the amplitude, the intensity of the signal is amplified, so you can actually receive it through the Atlantic Ocean. And the, the big difference here, because amplifiers really require energy to work, is that if you use a copper cable, you need an amplifier every two kilometers. And if you use an optical fiber, that length extends to up to 100 kilometers, so it's 50 times less amplification points. And that, of course, has a big impact on the energy consumption of this network. Also, when you have optical fiber transmitting information with these different colors I talked to you, you only need one amplifier, not one amplifier per color. That's, that's also great. And uh, the energy you need to transmit optical signals is lower than the energy you need to transmit electrical signals. Uh, in fact, Telefonica has a big statement in their web page, and they say optical fiber requires seven times less energy than uh, copper. And of course, that depends on how you do the study, but for sure, optical fiber requires less, less energy. And there's an, a second important benefit of optical fiber, which has to do with the fact that you cannot get these high bandwidths with anything else. And just because of that is that during the COVID, we were able to do Zoom meetings. The Zoom meeting we are having now, it's possible just because we have optical networks in place. Otherwise, it's impossible to transmit this amount of information. And, and that has a direct impact, direct impact on the carbon emissions because we don't need to travel to meet. 
And it has been shown that if you do video conferencing, you can, um, you use up to maximum 7% of the carbon emission if you actually had the meeting. This study, of course, was done um, under a lot of assumptions. It was an international meeting. But, but of course, if we don't uh, use our cars to get a, a, to a meeting and we can't rely on a, on a reliable um, connection, that's better for the planet. And finally, where the news are not so good is in the end of life of fiber. And fiber is not easily recycled because um, I, when I show you the previous image, I, I told you about the core, the cladding and the coating. And I have missed my, um, let me see if I can get uh, the laser point. Okay. So I, I talked to you about these three parts, but usually fiber is extra protected with some strengthening fibers and a cable jacket. And in this part, in the strengthening fibers, sometimes there is a, a, a gel and that gel is not easy, easily recycled. That makes the fiber very difficult to recycle as opposed to copper, which is recyclable, but not of it um, is recycled. Only 25% of telecommunication copper is currently recycled. So if you want to know more about how to produce a uh, fiber that is more recyclable, you can go to this reference seven here. Um, three, minute, three minute time, Alejandro. Thank you. And um, so to finish, what I want to show you is three examples of what we do at UCL in the Optical Networks Group um, to be more friendly with the environment. And the first one is more with less. We try to get networks that use less amount of fiber, but deliver the same performance, which is, which is difficult. Usually what we do for better performance, more information to transmit is putting more fiber. And here I want to show you the example with the NSFNET. This is the National Science Foundation um, on USA. And this is the topology. Topology is the nodes and the links. The links here are made of optical fiber. And in the group, um, Robin Matzer and, and Ruji Lu and other people worked on redesigning networks in such a way that you waste less. So you use less fiber, but you have increased performance. And here on the right, I'm showing you the performance is here. This is terabits per second. Um, the red one is the current network NSFNET. And the blue one is how much, cap how much ca uh, capacity or information you can get through the network with the new design. So this is one axis I want to show you. So you, we can put much more information, but here you can see the total amount of kilometers of fiber, which a little bit less um, kilometers. And uh, this is the on, the, red, on the red line, you can see the real NSFNET. And on the uh, dashed line, you can see the one um, the group is proposing. And by using this design, you get more information sent through the network, but with 2000 less kilometers. And a second example I wanted to show you is Sometimes we don't use well resources. Uh, of course, there are very good uh, reasons to have parking spaces reserved. Uh, but sometimes this parking, if you, do, if you know that nobody's going to use it, would be great to have it given to other people. Exactly the same happens in networks. So for example, in these four cities here, Cambridge, Oxford, uh, Oxford, Oxford sorry, London, and Manchester, if we have an, a, a connection here, for example, from Manchester to London, and we need one color to use that, and, and we know this connection is not going to be used for hours, for example, um, then we, instead of establishing a second connection here, we could use the same color, reducing the amount of colors we need to establish this. Um, this, is, this is the way we usually present this. You have two sources of information. They are not using the channels at the same time. Why don't we switch between them? And uh, second example, and I'm, with this, I'm going to finish is that um, data centers are growing uh, a lot and they are expected to consume 15% of world electricity by 2030. And here, this is the picture of one data center we have here in London. This is in the Isle of Dogs in the Docklands. And um, they look like that. And 40% of that consumption comes from the network, the network equipment you need to connect these different servers. And here we are working on making that network, here are the servers, but making this network optical. Because as I already told you, 
optical network consume much less energy than um, electricity. So that's our work on that. And finally, of course, we are working on faster networks. This is a, a record we had last year. This is Dr. Lydia Aldino there. And uh, faster networks means more meetings like this, less telecommuting. So thank you very much. I want to finish with um, thank you to the lovely people of the Optical Networks Group who also helped me to put this uh, presentation together. I couldn't put all the examples they sent me and a special thanks to the people on the bottom of this slide who sent me examples of how we are helping on decreasing energy consumption or not wasting resources. So with this, I thank you for attending this talk and I'm happy to, to receive any question you might have.